Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So today, just like the thumbnail suggests, banks, or big banks, are going big into cryptocurrency. And to start off with, we're going to talk about State Street, which has a, a paltry $3.2 trillion in assets under management, is going to launch a crypto service for private fund clients. On top of that, we'll take a look at BNY Mellon, which is far, far back with only 2.1 trillion assets under management as they join State Street to service new crypto exchanges. So we'll take a look at what's going on there as far as the big banks. But for every good news, there's a little bit of, a, of bad news. And that is that uh, President Joe Biden to step up crypto tax enforcement to help fund 1 trillion US infrastructure plan. We'll take a look at that and what I am doing to uh, help me uh, kind of relegate that a little bit. And also, we're gonna have to go over the question of the day where I got a great question from a subscriber where they talk about uh, how things work as far as taxes and airdrop. And finally, we'll finish up by just talking about the uh, Theta airdrop or Theta NFT drop, I should say. So that's what's going on. But first, let's take a look what's going on into the market. So today, it's a great day. It's Friday, it's a little bit late. I wanted to wait till, till the end. I had a lot of things going on today, but I wanted to see what kind of happened throughout the day as far as news, and it did not disappoint. On top of that, uh, we've got a pretty good market cap of 1.63 trillion. We're up four, almost 4% 4 in 24 hours. Uh, we've got Bitcoin price around 42. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. This is a great night. It's uh, Friday. I'm going to go finish up this video, then uh, go out a little bit and do some things. And uh, let's see what we got as far as like uh, the price action. So Ethereum, wow, 20, almost 2,500 bucks. Pretty good. Um, up 3% in just 24 hours. Everything's up. Uh, let's just say what it is. 15% for Chainlink. Congratulations. So everybody who was being laughed at for buying the dip and buying the dip and buying the dip, good job. That's exactly what uh, I did. And it worked out okay. And let's see what else. 3%, 5%. It's looking pretty good. So uh, that's what's going on in the market. I mean, it's a great day. Let's just let's just take the W and get the heck out of here. Also, since we're using Trade the Chain, this is what you can take a look at as far as uh, trading, if you're into that type of thing. And uh, gosh, this is these aren't good ones. How about this one? Negative 0.06 to plus 6% with 90% assurance. Voyager token. I, hey, I didn't do that. That's just, that's just what it is. And yes, I stand by my price prediction end of year, $30, still saying it. Also take a look at Neo Orchid, Orchid, sorry, StormX, OKB, and Unibright as those might be going up uh, between six and 8%. So uh, take a look at the descriptions. Uh, there's also for uh, Trade the Chains, which we'll use for sentiment analysis. All right, so let's break into the trillion dollar banks getting it. And I gotta tell you, I gotta, I gotta tell you, um, Banks, some banks are going to get it and some banks are not. And some banks are going to jump on board and figure out that, hey, this is the future and we want to get blockbustered. And some are just be like, nope, we're not going to go through with it. We're going to just do the same old thing because it works and they're going to get left behind. So Straight Street, uh, they get it and good for them. So what is going on here? So, so State Street to launch crypto services for private funds. Here's what we got. State Street, the second oldest bank in the U.S., uh, announced Thursday that it would provide digital and crypto asset administration services for the company's private fund clients. Again, uh, private funds clients trying to get in, them into the game. The bank will enable its private fund clients to access a set of institutional grade middle and back office offerings. That sounds shady, but it's not. Uh, that support diversified portfolios, including crypto related features like collection, standardization, reporting, processing, and reconciliation. So on top of that, you also have to take a look at, uh, we did a, there was an article not too long ago where the same thing was said, uh, State Street Bank launches crypto division. And this was just, gosh, this is on June 10th, uh, a little over a month, a month and some change, uh, a month and a half ago. And people were like, yeah, yeah, that's nice. I mean, they launch it, but they're gonna do anything with it. And again, uh, here we are today, a month and a half later, they're like, yes, we are going to do something with it, and uh, we're going to go full force. State Street signed an agreement with Luca, a U.S.-based blockchain data and software provider focused on reporting audit-ready data on crypto transactions. And I was like, what, what is Luca? So I had to take a look at it. This is what Luca is, solving the most complex data challenges, custom-built software and data for managing crypto assets on infrastructure made for the complexities of blockchain data. And this is what smart money does. Um, they invest into companies, they build the track, and then they start to make big moves. And if you notice right here, State Street 
what is known as a major investor in Luca, leading the company's Series C funding round in December 2020. So, I mean, look, that was like seven, eight months ago, but I can guarantee they did a lot of legwork and took a look at this and they have a plan and action for crypto and digital assets way before uh, they did this this funding round. So this, uh, when I start to take a look at what smart money is doing, smart money is moving into our market and that's what I want to see. All right, to finish up, uh, this will allow State Street to consume crypto assets mixed within private clients' traditional alternative investment portfolios. That's good for some people with uh, big money who uh, don't like too much risk, I suppose. Providing digital assets with the same quality and precision as traditional assets. That will ease some minds and uh, that will also, I think, help maybe with a little bit of regulation to get some clarity about what things are going on, what is a security, what is a currency, what is a commodity. I'm getting, but that, that's in there here and there. Uh, to finish up, the growth and popularity of digital assets is showing no signs of a slowdown, and State Street Digital is committed to continuing to build out the necessary infrastructure to further develop our digital asset service models to help meet our clients' growing demands. State Street Digital Director Nadine Shakar said, so look, I mean, the writing's on the wall. The smart banks see it. The ones that are kind of just out there flapping. Um, they're gonna get left behind. And we don't need all these banks. We don't need all these huge banks to do all these things. We just need a couple of banks that get it. And uh, surprise, surprise, it's the one with a ton of money uh, that have uh, trillions of assets under management. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. So we talk about uh, BNY, Mellon, and the exchange. This one totally just bypassed me. I just, I didn't even hear about this. I didn't uh, pay attention or maybe I saw it. I don't know. This is from July 21st. BNY Mellon joins State Street to service new crypto exchange. BNY Mellon, and if you don't know, just real quick, uh, State Street, 3.15 trillion assets under management. BNY Mellon has 45 trillion assets under custody and her administration and 2.3 trillion assets under management. So I misspoke. It's a 2.3. So not too bad. Uh, if you uh, have a lot of money and a lot of capital laying around and uh, maybe some clients might want to get into, oh, I don't know, a little crypto, just a guess. So what are they doing here? Well, they're like, you know what? We want a bigger piece of the pie. Let's do a crypto exchange. And I, I you can't make this up. And this is exactly what's going on. So Bank of New, of New York Mellon is joining a new crypto initiative by offering its custody support to a new crypto exchange backed by United States Bank State Street. So amazing. The smartest monies, well, it's debatable, but the ones with the most money seem to uh, always have more. According to a Wednesday report by the Financial Times, BNY Mellon has joined a consortium of six banks behind the launch of London-based Pure Digital, a new crypto trading platform venture that is scheduled to execute its first Bitcoin trade in the near future. So yes, they are getting into it. And this leads me to my final punching bag, as I call it, uh, which is BlackRock CEO Larry Fink seeing very little demand for crypto lately. This is on July 14th. When you see these types of stories coming around, I can't say it, I can't say it, but it is, these are just lies. These are, I'm just, I'm telling you right now, this guy's flat out, uh, either he is so tunnel visioned on some type of project that he's got, or he is living under a rock and that's just what it is. So when you see some of these, big type of players kind of out there going, there's no demand, it's not gonna happen. There's gonna be a bunch of regulation coming, you should stay away, it's gonna be very dangerous. And then all of a sudden you see all these huge banks just like crushing it and uh, you know doing things with crypto and digital assets, you're like, sure. So that again, it was just a little small snippet. I just like to, I just like to Larry Fink to be in there and, uh, and take his lumps because uh, he knows, he knows when he said this, they are doing something behind the scenes. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. So we had some good news. Let's uh, let's round it all out with a little reality. So President Joe Biden to step up crypto tax enforcement. Here's what's going on. So the taxing crypto transactions to fund U.S. infrastructure. The White House announced Wednesday that President Joe, Joey B. and bipartisan group of lawmakers have agreed on the details of a once-in-a-generation investment and the U.S. infrastructure. First of all, that is a marketing ploy right there. That is, that is, that is not something that uh, they're like. Well, let's spin taxes. How can we spin taxes? This is a once-in-a-generation investment. Very nice. And then before I go on, I always have to say this 
Don't give the video a thumbs down because you don't like Joe Biden. Give the video a thumbs down because it sucks and you didn't learn anything. But don't be, you know, very tribalistic and be like, I hate Joe Biden, thumbs down. Look, the news is the news. Just take it as, as it is and then just roll with it. It's, it. Whatever the news is, it doesn't really matter. You're in control of your own life and destiny. So just because this is happening, uh, there's ways uh, around it. Well, let's just be honest. So I'll get that in a second. The bill will be taken up in the Senate for consideration. Again, it has to pass the Senate. Just because one side wants something doesn't mean they're going to get it. The deal includes $550 billion in new federal investment in America's infrastructure, measures to step up tax enforcement on crypto assets. We're added to the infrastructure bill at the last minute. That's never a good sign when they start to add things at the last minute, but it is what it is. The measures impose heightened reporting requirements on crypto brokerages and exchanges. They will be required to provide details on crypto transactions of 10,000 or more to the IRS. So, I mean, really it just comes down to this. Uh, if you have more than $10,000, they're going to really want to know what the heck's going on so they can tax the living tar out of you. And that's really what it comes down to. Although, in all honesty, I, I think there's probably more to it, to this bill, and it'll be expanded and it'll be taken out and be sh uh, shuffled around because that's what bills do because people are negotiating, right? They always start high. Remember, Joey B, Joe Biden, he wanted to, uh, for capital gains, he wanted to go from 20% to 40%. And everybody freaked out. And I was like, Why? Uh, it's not like he's going to get it. It's just that he talks about it. That's the whole thing with negotiation, right? You start really high and then people start real low. They meet in the middle or down low or whatever else, but he's not going to get 40%. And the same thing here. I, I don't know if he's going to get this part. It makes kind of sense. 10,000 or more. Sure. But maybe they want more and they'll kind of go back and forth. But that is what is going on as far as Joe Biden. But I want to remind you of one thing. And that is that if you're not a big fan of taxes here in the U.S., who is? I don't know. I have never met anybody who's like, I love taxes. They're awesome. Uh, just remember that uh, Peter Thiel, there was an article from ProPublica, and they talked about, let me blow this up, uh, how tech mogul Peter Thiel turned a retirement account for the middle class into a $5 billion tax-free piggy bank. <laughs> I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to give you the highlights. Here's what he did. So um, because of his his early because he was uh, one of the co-founders of paypal and he had a bunch of shares and he put those in a roth ira and they weren't worth anything so you you have a maximum of at that point it was only two thousand dollars and the and the uh, roth ira in america hasn't been around that long so it's been around like since 90 like the late 90s which is crazy and the backdoor roth ira has only been around since 2010 crazy so what he did is he put all these shares into this Roth IRA, which was worth nothing. And then of course, when everything went public and everything, and they shut up to the you know the moon, and he's like, hey, it was two thousand dollars when I put it in. I can't help with that, you know. It just appreciated uh, so much. And the same thing can be said, I believe, for cryptocurrencies and digital assets. And that's why. Oh yeah, there it is. A link for I Trust Capital and is what I use. It's a Roth IRA. I did a video about it. The link's in the description. There is a, uh, the, the video is like 20 minutes long. I can, get, I can paraphrase right now. There's three types of, of, of uh, IRAs. There's a, a traditional, a SEP, and a Roth. I use a Roth because you get taxed uh, initially and then for all the gains, you don't get taxed when you take the, all those things out, which is exactly what Peter Thiel used. So uh, I Trust Capital has a boatload of different uh, assets as far as like digital assets, uh, you can see actually, and also you can use gold. You can actually put gold and silver into this Roth IRA. And as far as cryptocurrency, they have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Chainlink, Polkadot. They got a ton. Compound you up. And they just added a bunch more too. Algorand, Engine, Bat, Curve, Solana. I didn't know that. Yearn and Sushi. I mean, everything that you really want to have there. And then also uh, when you, if you want to trade within your Roth IRA, uh, there's no penalties and, um, it's tax-free. <laughs> That's crazy. So if you think that Bitcoin's going to go down for some whatever reason, you're a big trader, you can sell that Bitcoin in your Roth IRA. You can, and then that'll be cash. You can hold on to that cash, and then once it drops, you can buy it again. I'm not that guy. I'm just a simpleton uh, where I just buy and hold. But that is uh, what it is. Uh, look in the description below. You get uh, 30 days free with the discount code, and that is what's going on for Biden and everything else. If you don't like taxes, that's just an option. All right, so now I would like to talk about a pretty good question that I got in the comment section. I try to read as many as I possibly can, even the bad ones. Yes, I know I can be a moron, sure. Uh, so, but the good ones are, I mean, there's some legit questions here. This was a good one. It says, uh, 
This was after we did uh, the actual, we, we did a video on the DNews uh, staking pool, which I just did an update. If you want to, you know, stake with DNews, you get between four and 6% APY. And I talked about, there was a question I keep getting, which is why would I stake with you when I can get it, uh, you know, between four and 5% on an exchange? I answered those things and everything you want to know is in this video, links in the description. But the question that I got yesterday was this. Uh, he states, I've been thinking about staking with your pool for a while, thanks to the video. Anyway, what I don't understand is taxes. That's okay, because neither does the U.S. government. Uh, will we be taxed on our gains even if we don't cash out? Like other people, I want to compound my ADA over the next few, few years. How does this work? Maybe we can get your crypto account friend. Uh, that's that's uh, Sheehan Chandrasekhar. Um, but he's a busy guy. But he, here's what it is. To answer your question, uh, basically it's like this. The government's taxes airdrops when you get them. So even if you don't sell them, they're still gonna tax you, which is pretty ridiculous, let's just be honest. However, there is some uh, little bit of a shining light, and that was from this article we covered a couple of days ago, Crypto Investor Sues IRS. Uh, Joshua Jarrett, one of my heroes, uh, new hero, uh, has filed suit against the IRS. He claims that uh, taxing newly created tokens as income is in direct contradiction of over 100 years of U.S. tax law. And this is what he says. Uh, Jared and his attorneys argue that newly created crypto tokens are akin to a just completed painting and are not considered income until they are sold. And doesn't that make a lot of sense? So to answer the question, here's what it is. Um, they're going to tax you when you get these airdrops, when you get these rewards, even in your Cardano, uh, if you use the Daedalus, Yoroi, or Adalite. And they're just going to say, well, we're going to tax it. Even though it's, it's really, to me, unrealized gains. However, there is a lawsuit going on. I personally don't think that they should be able to tax you. It doesn't make any sense to me because you haven't sold them. Uh, they're in your possession. So why would you get taxed for it? It's just like they talk about. It's like, it'd be like if, if a farmer uh, has, he harvests all his crops and they're just sitting there and they're like, hey, you owe us for all those crops. Well, I haven't sold those crops. So why would you tax me on that? So again, the government really doesn't have a good grasp of what's going on. And that's why when people say, we don't need regulation, we need a little regulation, we need some clarity, because right now, these big banks are getting in, big companies are getting in, and if we could just figure out just a little bit of tax and just a little bit of clarity as far as like, what's a currency, what's a security, what's a commodity, and everything else in between, I think we'd be in a much better place. So that hopefully answers your question, and uh, that is it for that piece. So let me just finish up uh, by talking and just really just saying thanks to everybody. So we did our our Theta drop for the NFT and uh, everything, yeah, I mean, they didn't sell out, but uh, everybody bought, we had, uh, it, it was all about the bids for the, the portfolio consultation, live Zoom session with me. I think that was for uh, six people, no, three people. YouTube brand shout out, I got two people there and then I'll be doing that uh, as soon as I get the information from Theta and it looks like some t-shirts yeah, 35 bucks for a t-shirt. It's crazy. Anyhow, uh, those sold out. And then this one was my favorite. Uh, the chosen one, uh, 2,500 were sold and uh, I can't thank everybody enough. So what does that mean? That means that uh, a lot of the proceeds, part of the proceeds at least, is gonna go to a couple different charities. I know we're gonna give to uh, Kiva, uh, one of our favorite ones, which is also what we contribute to for the DNU stake pool. Also probably going to give to the uh, El Paso Humane Society, one of our favorites. And then uh, Dog is my co-pilot and we'll go from there. But uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks to everybody for contributing and uh, buying some great artwork. And uh, also I want to thank again to uh, Ivory um, Creatives, Symbiotic Creatives. <laughs> I was get that wrong. Uh, the link is in the description. Um, that person can help you if you want to create any kind of like artistic type of NFT or anything that has to do with art. Uh, very talented person. So uh, that is it for today. So look, I know it's a little bit long, a lot of things going on, but uh, I think this is a great time. Look, we've got nothing but good news. The banks are coming in and the banks are here. Let's be honest. They've already done all their hard work. And then the actual market is looking pretty healthy right now. So I'm pretty happy with what's going on there. And uh, we'll see if this uh, can continue. I still see maybe a little bit of a dip to come up, but I'm a long-term investor and I could really care less for these dips. I just see what's going to happen in the next one, three, and five years. Okay, so me all the way to the end. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. All things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So uh, have a great weekend. See you on the next one.